Divine Truth Theme Discussions Discussions between Jesus and Mary about specific topics and issues. This is Session 5, Part 5 of the discussion, God's Laws of Forgiveness and Repentance, where Jesus and Mary continue discussing God's principles and laws of forgiveness and repentance, delivering more information about compensation itself, and examining some of the emotions and feelings we may have about sin and personal truth. This session was recorded on the 17th of October 2017 from 2 p.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Why I feel worse when I recognize a sin? So we've been speaking just now about why we feel worse when we um, recognize truth. Recognize truth. Yep. Now let's ask uh, specifically why do I feel worse when I recognize sin and even when I start to eradicate the sin from me? Mm -hmm. Why does it involve feeling worse? Shouldn't I feel better? Shouldn't there be rewards for doing this? Because I'm now in a better condition. Well, we we're saying here we may feel worse. Of course, it doesn't have to be the case, yeah. but there are reasons for it if we do feel worse. Uh -huh. Now, uh, firstly, we probably need to say specifically where we're going to feel worse because we could actually feel worse in our physical body. So our physical body could have, uh, because of awarenesses that have now developed of our sin, the relationship between the awareness of the sin and the actual physical body pain becomes stronger now. Mm -hmm. And so we actually can feel more pain in our physical body mm -hmm. once we become aware of a sin. It also has the same effect in our spirit body. So for those who are spirits and don't have a physical body, they can now become aware of how the sin is reflected in their spirit body. You know, they'll see the different areas of their spirit body that have got problems or diseases in them and these particular areas of the spirit body then also have a flow on effect into the physical body yeah and then there's also the effect it has on the soul which obviously is more instant so um but every time you become aware of a sin there's feelings in you that feel guilt you know and mm -hmm. uh, about the particular thing and this guilt is caused naturally by the the no longer denying the truth Mm -hmm. and and now seeing the the true extent or damage or of what you actually have done by yeah. engaging the sin yeah. and so you could actually feel worse emotionally too so okay. you could feel worse physically spiritually and emotionally yeah uh, you could feel worse in in all those three aspects of life and frequently all three together yeah and um, that's frequently the case yeah so then we've got to look at well why is that yes why is that why case? why does that happen and it, it seems to revolve a, a lot around our viewpoint of sin. It does, yes. Yeah. Yes. So I'll list a few that we've got here sure. and let you respond. Sure. So physical pain in the physical body usually increases temporarily due to the removal of denial and the growing acceptance of sin. Yes, you sort of, uh, to, to um, emotionally to remove sin you've got to firstly accept there is a sin so that's like an intellectual awareness initially and the intellectual process of awareness is a four or five stage process actually mm -hmm. i've talked about this process many times in seminars yeah and then you get to the the emotional state where you start the emotional awareness process and that begins with an emotional recognition that there is a sin and it, and it goes through five or six different stages as well until you get to the point where you've actually released the emotional cause of the sin. Yeah. Now, obviously, because of this growing state of intellectual awareness and then a growing state of emotional awareness, there are going to be changes energetically inside of your soul mm -hmm. uh, as to how feelings flow in your soul. Yep. And that has a subsequent flow on effect into your spirit body and your physical body. So what that means then is now that I'm aware of something, but it hasn't yet been released, usually my physical body ailments mm -hmm. increase mm. right to show me that i've got it right there is a link <laughs> between what i've now become aware of and that particular ailment mm -hmm. and and this helps us to yep. go oh, okay this ailment is telling me that the problem still exists and so is that because there's a heightened um kind of soul-based emphasis on the issue and so it manifests more strongly or well it starts this? even from the from the intellectual awareness period yeah so, so it can begin there mm -hmm. remember we've said that the intellectual awareness period is five or six steps and then the emotional awareness period is another seven or eight steps and so so anyway through this pl place this 
this period of time, mm. you're going to have a heightened sense of allowance of a concept yep. that you're still emotionally fighting. So I guess I'm asking, is it an actual change in your body or are you just more aware of what's already happening in your body? Or no, how many times it, it can be an actual change in your body yeah. Where, yeah. where your body uh, emotional flow exhibits a higher level of energy blockage mm -hmm. than it would have done before Yeah, because you're now aware of the problem. Yeah, yeah. so and it so is you, an emphasis. So uh, you can have a, a, an exacerbated Mm -hmm. uh, physical response mm -hmm. that feels like, oh, I'm getting real sick now or whatever. Yep. Um, you know, frequently before I released fear, I would get some, some of these responses or frequently before I let, let go of grief, I, I would get a flu mm -hmm. and then I'd go through the process of mm -hmm. let go and grief because the flu was the, it, it, it demonstrating the resistance I still had emotionally uh -huh. to the process, but I was aware of it intellectually. So expose, it's the um, exposure of the sin and um, some kind of growing intention to, to deal with that sin differently that creates then uh, the resistance almost um, has more energy in it or... Uh, uh, no, no. Uh, parts of you are now starting to uh, be aware of mm -hmm. all the blockages, mm -hmm. but you're also in resistance to allowing those blockages to be released. Yeah. So it's sort of a fight. So now you're in a yeah. fight, yeah. internal fight. Okay. Yeah. Before you weren't in a fight about it, it was just what it was. Yeah. Now you're in an internal fight emotionally about it. You, you know you need to release it, but you haven't yet released it and you still don't know whether you want to release it sometimes. Yeah. And so in that place, you often get sicker Yes. as a result. And it's only due to this resistance that we have mm -hmm. generally to allowing the causal feeling, the actual emotion that, ca that causes us to sin to be released. To be released, yeah. And, and until we let that go, you, we will have this pain. So at the moment, I'm going through a lot of pain associated with self-worth. Mm -hmm. So that means that everywhere in my body, there's a blockage with self-worth issue. Mm -hmm. That pain is increasing yeah. for me at the moment because yeah. I'm going through this internal fight mm -hmm. going on where one side, I, you know, I don't want to let go of certain emotions because of certain reasons. And the other side, I do want to let go of it. I really want it and I'm praying about it. And, and there's an internal fight going on, and the more the internal fight goes on, until I get to the point of tipping over the edge yes. and actually feeling the emotion properly, and there'll be this internal fight going on, and that will probably heighten my body pain mm -hmm. until such a point where I tip over the edge. Yes. <laughs> and then once you tip over the edge, it all goes away. It'll be all good. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, I begin to be sensitive to the pain I've caused and am causing to others by engaging in my sin. And before before this point, I was um, using methods to detune and numb out to the effects of my sin upon other people. That's right. But now I'm seeing it. That it, And that it actually does not only damage myself, but damages other people. Okay. And, and we're starting to see now the relationship. So naturally, at this point, I'm starting to feel worse because I go, oh boy, I've hurt them again. You know, and, and because you're now more sensitive to hurting other people, you don't want to hurt them. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you're going through the, ah, oh, there I go again. I, you know, I've done the same thing again. I've really got to deal with this addiction because if I don't, oh, I've really got to deal with this sin because if I don't, I'm going to keep hurting them. Yeah. And, and you start seeing the pain that you cause at other people by hurting them. Yeah. And that makes you feel bad as well. So, yeah. Yeah, so that obviously makes you feel worse yeah. when you recognise this is a part of the recognition of sin. Of sin, yeah. yeah. Uh, I also begin to be sensitive to the pain and penalty I am occurring through the sin. Yes. So towards myself. Yes. And before I was numbing out to those. That's right. We frequently are numbed out to our lack of love of self. Uh, yeah. We've been taught from a very young age to not love ourselves generally. And uh, we're frequently very numbed out to it. And in fact, it's probably one of the biggest problems we're going to face in our future is coming into tune with what love of self means. What it's actually and what like, it actually yeah. is going to feel like. For most of us, uh, you know, we don't have a strong love of self. We have a strong denial of self, a strong denial of emotions and a strong mm -hmm. desire to avoid emotions through addiction. But that's not loving yourself. And once you come to see God's definition of loving yourself and to see the sins associated with it, sometimes the greatest pains I've had are related to that. Um, internal pains that I've had are related to that. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Okay. 
Uh, in addition, I actually begin to uncover the emotions that I was covering over through my sin or the emotions that are driving my sin. Mm. So yeah. sometimes there's anger that I then become sensitive to, and that doesn't feel that good. Uh, no. So like these kind of emotions are emotions like shame, mm -hmm. sadness, anger, these kind of emotions. Fear. That, fear, fear yeah. that are there, always been there, mm -hmm. and they drive my desire to do something wrong, you know. Yeah. And, and these emotions, once they start poking their head through, because we're so detuned from them for so many years, mm. They are going to feel uncomfortable. Yeah. And so you probably will feel worse when they start poking their head through yep. until the point where you just surrender to them. Yep. And once you surrender to them, now you get used to feeling them and then it's okay and you, yeah. it's all relief. Then. Yeah. 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 Gotcha. Uh, it can also be because I haven't yet removed the emotions I was wanting to avoid. So these ones that you're just speaking about. Mm -hmm. And so there's still a negative compensation occurring on my soul because the, the sin is still really existing. I'm, I've recognized it. I'm trying to start to do something about it, but it's still all there within me operating in the same way, isn't it? Yes. And, and, and I, may, I may still be engaging actions that degrade my soul because of them, mm -hmm. which will also increase my compensatory pain. Yes. So I may still be doing things where I, where I engage the sin, engage the sin, and and I still and I will get that additional compensatory pain for engaging the additional sin mm -hmm. uh, the, Im immediately. But because I'm now more aware of it, I'm now also more aware that it's there, and I'm more aware of its instancy. You know yes. how 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 instant it is. Yeah. And uh, and that often then makes me feel worse in the moment too. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Um, it also results when I recognise my sin. It results in becoming aware of the guilt which is the natural penalty of my sin yes um and so i often then feel worse because i feel like oh and this only can happen when we uh, awake to the sin it, yes when we the, truly to awake the, to the sin yeah we will have feelings of guilt yep. associated with it and that it, you cannot avoid that and if you attempt to, you will shut down the process of letting go of the sin. Yeah. And this is a part of the natural process of seeing the consequence of sin. Yeah. One of the consequences of sin is guilt. Mm. And, and it's an emotion that mm -hmm. needs to be felt. And frequently we try to avoid it. Yeah. And, and frequently we say, oh, that person's shaming me. Yeah. When they're not, yeah. all they're doing is exposing an emotion inside of ourselves yes. of guilt about what we've done. Yeah. And yeah. uh, and that's what we need to see rather than, say, another person trying to shame me. Mm -hmm. The reality is once you've dealt with your sin, you cannot be shamed for mm -hmm. it. In other words, you cannot be made to feel bad about what you did. Yeah. Because once you've dealt with it, you don't feel bad about it anymore. <laughs> you've released its cause yep. and you've released the sin itself and its effects. Mm -hmm. And so you no longer feel bad about any of the sins you may have committed in the past. Yeah. And then nobody can shame you for anything you've done. Yeah. You will not feel shame yeah. anymore. Anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And finally, once I begin de deconstructing the reason for my sin, which is this um, flawed emotional condition mm -hmm. that's driving my desire, I feel the pain associated with these underlying emotions, the harmful emotions, and it's usually from my childhood. Um, and and I been using my sin to deny those to deny those emotions yes most of our painful emotions our injuries if you could call them that come from our childhood experience yeah and and you know when i say most a lot a lot of them do mm -hmm. a lot of them also come from the choices we've made during our life but a lot uh, come from our childhood experience now, obviously, the reason for my addictions is to deny my childhood experience yeah. as much as possible so that I don't have to feel about it. Now that the addiction is being exposed and the sin is being exposed, now I, I, I have the awareness of mm -hmm. these childhood emotions that still exist within mm -hmm. me that were painful at the time to experience and that I actually suppressed from experiencing for lots of, you know, again, hundreds of different reasons. Yes. Yeah. And at some point, I'm going to have to feel them. Yeah. And that's why I sometimes feel worse, even though I'm getting better. Even though you're getting better. Yes. That's right. Yeah. So the, lots of reasons there that we talked about, about why when we recognize our sin and even start to want to try to address it, yeah. we can often feel worse and 
I love that you said it's just a natural part of the process. Some mm. of it is actually helping us to become sensitive to what God's view of what's loving and what is not, like morality, basically. Yeah, and all of the feelings of being feeling worse are all the result of either our past behaviour or our current actions yes. when it comes to sin. Yeah. So we can't go and blame somebody else for that. No. They are all the result of either something we've done in the past or something we're now doing to avoid it. Yeah. But, uh, but once we see that we're doing it, Mm -hmm. We can go, oh, I can reduce this feeling of pain and suffering yeah. if I embrace my emotions more openly and rapidly. Yes. And if I have less resistance and so forth, I can reduce all the pain and suffering. Mm -hmm. I can reduce the feeling of feeling worse yes. through the process. And, and I guess I included this series of questions in this session because we're talking a lot about how compensation rewards our loving acts and um, penalizes. So there's pain and pleasure kind of a playoff with compensation. And yet often because people are living so much numbed out, detuned, in denial, getting addictions to society's approval, man, you know, short term pleasure kicks um, through addictive actions and relationships. It can feel like when we start to take a loving path, so face personal truth, begin to desire to address sin, it feels like hang on, Jesus has been telling me this is supposed to be, get really like nice now, um, but actually I feel a whole lot worse. Um, and so this, some of these questions that help people to understand the real dynamics of what's going on and what has been going on for yes. them in the past. And here we have not even mentioned yet, the, and we probably won't because it's a different discussion altogether, but we must sort of briefly mention this concept of when we are in denial, you know, we're not yet released our sin, but we're aware that it's there, mm -hmm. there are, are more severe pressures from spirits and people around us on earth mm -hmm. to get us to go back to sin. Yes. So that in itself also makes feels our life feel worse. So there's lots of reasons mm -hmm. why it might feel worse for a period of time. Yeah. Mm. Excellent. Why I'm sometimes emotionally confused when I stop sinning. So this is a good thing to talk about. I really want to answer the question, why sometimes when I even stop sinning altogether, I, I see it and I work towards stopping it and I stop it, why do I sometimes feel both better and worse mm -hmm. when I stop a sin? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> why? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I suppose there's a lot of reasons why, isn't there? Potentially. Yeah. So perhaps what we need to do is... Talk about some, Talk of, about some of those reasons in between. Yeah. But, so, but, but it's sort of like, you know, the, if we remind ourselves firstly about the sin mm -hmm. in terms of what's really going on, the law of compensation allows us to see, to get rewards for stopping our sinful behavior. Mm -hmm. And of course, that's also, there's also the aspect of starting good behavior mm -hmm. that's also involved, mm -hmm. obviously. So here we're, we're talking more about the confusion that happens when I stop sinning. Yeah. But we've not necessarily also uh, worked out or de decided to, to start doing good things yet mm -hmm. <laughs> either. Yeah. And, and these, are, these are aspects that we probably also need to consider. So is it the case that I can stop my sin without actually dealing with the desire to sin well that's very hard to mm -hmm. do it's very okay. hard because because if you have a desire to sin it's like the sin then becomes automatic and 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 you have to use a lot of willpower yes which is not the best way to resolve the problem no to stop sinning you have to use willpower rather than actually going through process of desire and getting rid of the underlying desire to sin yeah so so Yes, you can stop sinning by using willpower to a degree, but you're not going to cure every sin that way. Yeah. And you're certainly not going to be able to stop every sin that way. Yeah. Because some sins are, all sin is motivated by an emotion. Unless you remove the emotion, mm -hmm. you're going to find it very, very hard to stop sinning. Yeah. Right. So, so you might stop sinning using your willpower, mm -hmm. but still be quite emotionally confused. Yeah, that that is a reality. So that probably belongs more in our previous section that we talked about, where you can still be feeling some of the compensation, 
because the desire is still within you, but you've changed an action. That's right. So that, that's not really what we're talking about in this section then. That's right. So what we're talking about is where I've actually made an emotional change right. and I've stopped sinning. Yep. So that's one scenario. But yep. then you're contrasting that with then the desire to undertake loving acts is not necessarily established. Not yet, us. no. Uh -huh. Often not yet. Because, mm -hmm. it, you know, we're, we're being concerned, a lot of it has been concerned about just stopping the negative things that we do. Yep. And we haven't given, oftentimes, a lot of positive thought, you know, some, some constructive thought to um, what are the positive things we could do? What are the loving things that we could do? And so sometimes we end up in this sort of state almost of being unsure about our future and mm -hmm. unsure about how we should exercise our future desire and so forth. Mm -hmm. And that, of course, causes some level of confusion. Mm -hmm. We're not yet really fully connected to our desires, for example. And so we sort of feel like, well, uh, you know, what are my desires? I've got mm -hmm. to discover them now, mm -hmm. you know, and, and then work out what they are in harmony with love and, and work through that issue of desire. So, mm -hmm. so obviously, um, you know, the desire to engage loving behaviour is yet to be really determined mm -hmm. and, and we're yet to fully um, work through that problem mm -hmm. in terms of how we're going to use our future life. In the past, we've, we acknowledge that we've used a lot of our life to sin yeah. <laughs> um, for different reasons. And now that we've removed some of this sin, we go, well, what, what's left to do now? Like, yeah. you know, what do I do now? I, uh, you know, I'm so used to sinning. That's usually all I was doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What do, I, what do I do now to improve the situation so that uh, I actually do positive things? Yes. So that, that, uh, that becomes a part of the issue as well. And then um, sometimes your life goes through this change now too where, where what you're used to has now all disappeared. Mm. And, and a lot of, uh, during this process, a lot of the friends that you had were friends that helped you in your sin. Yep. And a lot of them may have disappeared. And uh, also a lot of the activities you engaged to help you to engage your sin or, or avoid your sin. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those activities will have disappeared. And it's almost like you're starting life afresh, like a virgin, <laughs> you <could> say, <laughs> um, starting your life afresh, you know. Yeah. Um, where you now have to decide what it is you want and what you desire. And no, nothing's being forced by any external actions now or any internal neediness. Yep. And so now you've got to discover what it is you truly want to do and what you truly desire mm -hmm. and, and what's going to happen in your future as well. So that's a kind of confusion then. You're saying, that, oh, gosh, what am I going to do? And now that I'm not driven by these compulsions, what will happen? Yes, and it's like you're sort of left at a place that sort of feels like a bit at sea sometimes, mm -hmm. where you're not, you're now, your life is new, your, your, your activities are new, none of the things that you've done in the past satisfy you anymore, and, and yet you've yet to decide what is going to satisfy you in the future. Mm -hmm. and, and so now you're at a state where you sort of, if you're not careful, you can stay in this sort of laconic state mm -hmm. for, for many, many years, where mm -hmm. you sort of go, oh, well, are now not feeling the negative results of, of sinning a lot anymore and and I'm not sinning a lot and I feel the benefits of that, you know. Yeah. But but, you know, a lot of my so called friends who want to keep sinning are no longer my friends and a lot of my family won't accept me anymore and, and a lot of the activities I engage before don't interest me anymore. And and so there now what what is going to motivate you to exercise a desire and what do you do what do you desire mm. you, you haven't worked out all these things yet mm -hmm. and and the irony is that you can't really work out those things in mm. a pure way without getting rid of some of the sin yes yeah otherwise you're just driven by the addictions involved in the sin yeah yeah and it's not until i cease the sin that i can actually start to really recognize that my unloving behaviour is always penalised and loving behaviour is rewarded. I don't actually fully see that yet before I stop sinning, do Not I? Not yet. I, you know, before I stopped sinning, I was uh, believing that, you know, my, my pain and suffering was completely uh, disconnected from my sin. Mm -hmm. Now I'm starting to see, no, a lot of the pain and suffering that I've had in my life has been a direct result of my sin or the sins of others. Mm -hmm. And so I've started to work my way through that issue. 
but I but I'm not yet really working out what actually brings me true pleasure. Mm. What what is the actual thing that brings me those true rewards? You know, yeah. the loving yeah. behaviour that brings true rewards, and how much of that loving behaviour that I can engage without sinning. Mm. Like in other words. Uh, you know, we're so used to thinking that a lot of the things we really like doing yeah. are sins, you know, yeah. like... Well, we're so used to doing them, but in fact, they are sins. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, or we do them in a sinful way, you know. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of activities we can engage in an unsin, in, in, without sin, mm -hmm. but uh, we're not used to that. And, and we're, we're confused about that. Uh, yeah. what, 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 what are those things? And also there's a tendency during this phase to be quite confused about what is loving to myself and what is loving to others you know a lot of times in the world there is a definition of selfishness when you're loving to yourself mm -hmm. but true love of self always results in love of others in other words love of self is not mutually exclusive to love of others mm. in fact uh, the way god's designed it if you truly love yourself you will also be truly loving others mm -hmm. in that moment and so we we often have confusions associated with that due to past experiences where we were accused of selfishness when we when we connected to our own desires and yet from god's perspective that's not selfish he wants you to do that so um but he doesn't want you to do that to the exclusion or the detriment of others yeah and this is where you know we often have a lot of confusion as well oh if i go and do this thing is that detrimental to others i'm not really sure because i've never done that before yeah <laughs> you know yeah, I mean? yeah and uh, there's often a bit of confusion there as well yeah mm. yeah okay all right, well, let's maybe now just break it up and talk about why we actually can feel worse when we stop sinning and as opposed to why we can feel better. And that's why um, sometimes we feel confused because sometimes we're feeling a mixture of some of these things. Yes. Yeah, so it's quite a long list of why we might feel worse and a long list of why we might feel better. And sometimes we're feeling both things in response to different things within ourselves that mm -hmm. are still existing. Yeah. Um, and that's why it feels confusing. Yeah, but also the, the, remember this is a process we're going through. It's not it's not an instant change. No. So we're going from a process of awareness, then we usually you know stop our sin, but then all the underlying emotions get brought up as to why we wanted to sin in the first place. Yeah. So we stopped our sin, and we can see the wrong of the sin, and we we feel bad about the sin, and we know it's a sin, and mm -hmm. we can feel all these kind of things. But, but there's still underlying emotions that we're yet to release that drove them. Yeah. And there's also confusion in that place. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of reasons for it. And perhaps if we discuss some of those specific reasons, uh, it'll help people understand why it might be that they, you know, stop sinning, but still feel a bit confused about what they should do next. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and feel better and worse kind of better kind of seemingly better and worse yeah during this phase you'll have your emotional ups and downs yeah is the best way of saying it <laughs> <laughs> awesome and you've got to get used to it yeah <laughs> why i might feel worse when i stop sinning what are some of the reasons why I might feel worse when I stop sinning? Yeah, so <laughs> like, there are there again, there could be hundreds of reasons. So we, we're just going to list a few that, you know, might make sense to people as to what's happening for them. Mm -hmm. uh, but there could be hundreds of reasons why I may feel worse when I stop sinning. So uh, one, one, one reason is, all my addictions are created because I really want them. Mm -hmm. And now I've removed them. Mm -hmm. In other words, I'm no longer satisfying my addictions. Yeah. Now, I still may want them, but I've stopped having them. I've stopped myself from having them. So does that mean that, because um, earlier you sort of said, no, I can't really cease a sin until the desire for the sin is gone. Mm -hmm. But here we're talking about our addictions. You can certainly cease an addiction, and before yes. the desire, desire for the addiction is gone, you won't be able to do it permanently, of course. No. It's a temporary state. Yep. Right. But here we're saying, oh, let's say I've got an addiction. Let's say it's a physical one, like I eat too much. Mm -hmm. um, I can stop eating too much. Yep. But I still might have the underlying emotional reason why I wanted to eat too much there. And so now it feels like 
I'm in a bit of a fight. Mm -hmm. I still want to eat too much, but I know, oh, but I've also had the emotional realizations that I get fat and I don't like that and it feels bad and I'm having trouble with that. And so I'm feeling worse basically because I still have the desire. Well, I might be confused because on one hand, I might be feeling good mm -hmm. because I'm getting slimmer and yep. I'm looking a bit better and I, I now don't want to eat too much because mm -hmm. I look better and I feel healthier. But on the other hand, I've still got the desire to overeat sometimes. Yeah. And, and it feels a bit confusing. Mm -hmm. And I haven't yet dealt with the desire to overeat. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the sin's still there. Mm -hmm. The desire is still there. But I have stopped actually taking action upon it. Mm -hmm. and, and so during this phase of change, I'm in this state of state of sometimes I see the good points to it. And other times I think, I just want to go and have a binge. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> you know, so it's like, yeah, I, anyway. I just want to give up and go and have a binge. Yeah. And, and during that phase, that's often what you will do. Mm -hmm. you, you will you, know, you work hard at it for a few weeks and you can feel these other desires developing in you that you don't want to get fat and you don't want to yeah. be and you want to be healthy. And these are all pure desires in mm -hmm. harmony with love. But on the other hand, the other desire that you just want to have a bin sometimes because it's life overwhelms you and you just want to go and do it. Yep. And that might be still there too. Gotcha. Mm, so gotcha. now I'm in a confused state. And sometimes I'm going to go and act on this good emotion. Yep. And other times I'm going to go and act on this negative other. emotion. Gotcha. Mm. Gotcha. All right. What other reasons can I feel worse when I stop sinning? Well, um, I'm yet to find out often why I want to sin. Mm -hmm. So, so sometimes I can be in a state of confusion about that. I go, what's this all about? Like, I, 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 I've stopped doing it. So let's say a man's addiction to porn, for example. He stopped watching porn, mm -hmm. but he still feels like he wants to see naked women's bodies all mm -hmm. the time. What, what's going on there? Do you yep. know what I mean? He, he doesn't know why. He doesn't understand why yet. Mm -hmm. And so he might be going through this process again of like, I want to stop it. I know it's not good. I know that, you know, seeing naked women all the time, that those women have got to do specific things that are not good for their life in order to do that. And I know that it has negative consequences. I also know it affects my relationship, perhaps, because I'm sharing sexual energy, you know, in this way with these women rather than with my partner or whatever, um, you know, and, and so forth. But I still got the feeling I want to do it mm -hmm. inside of me. And I don't know why. Mm. I, I know it's not good, but I don't know why it's there. So that can become quite a almost um, burdensome place, isn't it? Well, it doesn't I have feel... to be. Um, but, you know, you might pray a lot about it and so forth and still be confused as to why it's there. And you don't, you know, Lord, you might not be noticing the attraction mm -hmm. that, that will show you why it's there. Mm -hmm. And you might not be noticing it because sometimes we're a bit clueless about mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And we might not be noticing it. And so, so, so I kind of feel worse, even though I'm not engaging with the pornography. Well, I feel confused. I, I feel, right. you know, sometimes talking. I feel good because yeah. I've stopped it. And other times I feel like I want to do it. And, and sometimes I might even slip into doing it. Mm -hmm. And then I feel bad. And so it'll be a state of ups and downs, emotionally up and Got down. You. Mm. Right. So, so the third reason is I, like that I may feel worse when I stop sinning uh, rather than better <laughs> and therefore be confused is because I, I'm still avoiding the cause of the sin. So I'm, I know that I want to do it. Uh, I, I don't know why mm -hmm. or I do know why now, but I don't really want to deal with why. You know, that could be a reason. Mm hmm. I just, I just don't want to face why. Mm -hmm. I don't want to process that emotionally. Why? Yeah. Right. And that, and that's going to make me feel worse because I know that I'd need to do it. Yes. But I don't know if I really want to do it yet. Yeah. <laughs> Got you. I don't really want know if I want to fix the problem. <laughs> Got you. <laughs> um, yeah. And so in addition, it might be that I don't want to also remove the cause of my sin. So I, I've stopped it, but I don't want to remove why. Mm. That's sort of, you've sort of touched on that already, haven't so, you? So one of them is I don't want to remove why. Yeah. The other one is I might want to, but I have yet to do it. And the, <laughs> the other one was I kind of want to, but I've got no idea why it's what it is. Exactly. Yeah. So the, there's yeah. three different levels there, isn't it? Yeah. I, I want to, but I don't know what it's about. Yeah. I, I now know what it's about, mm -hmm. but I still don't want to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and, and or, or there's a third one that we just said, I, I'm, I'm yet to actually do it, to yes. actually get rid of the reason. Yes. You know, and so I'm still going to feel worse probably until I get rid of the reason. Because mm. I'm aware of all these things that I feel bad about, yeah. but I still haven't got rid of the reason why I still want to do them. 
<laughs> so is this kind of thing happening when I've awakened to the sin? So you have an emotional recognition. This is yeah, something yucky and bad. I feel compensation, but also my desire to love others is causing me to feel like I don't want to do don't this want to do anymore. It anymore. So I stop the sin. Um, and that's possible, isn't it? Because I've had an emotional awakening. I stop it. There's still the there's still there's the still the desire to sit in yeah. to, for me to engage it. Yeah. Um, but I have sort of stopped it at this point. Yeah. And well, as best as you're able to do, you know, with with uh, some of these desire based changes you've made. Yeah. So in other words, you, you can have a desire to sin, yeah. or you can have a desire to be loving. Yeah. Now, once your desire to be loving is above your desire to be sit, to to sin. sin that's when you stop sinning yes right your desire to be loving is high but it still hasn't removed the sin necessarily mm. it's not natural for you to stop sinning yeah. under those circumstances yeah. the way it's going to be natural is for you to remove the sin completely yeah. so there's no emotional signature related to the sin mm. anymore now it's going to be natural for you to do what you desire to, that to, is to do the loving to thing. not to not sin you know now it's going to be natural you've got to mm. And in that case, then the sin, while the desire to to not sin, basically, yes, it exceeds the desire to sin. Yes, <laughs> um, the sin is still within me, so I'm still reaping the penalties of compensation. And is that why sometimes I feel worse? That's really essentially what we're talking about here. That's right. Because the compensation needs to keep acting on us until we it remove it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It's going to keep acting yeah. until we remove it. Yeah. And also it's going to keep driving some behaviour, the old behaviour, mm -hmm. until we remo re remove it as well. Because remember, it's the emotional content of the sin that drives the behaviour. Mm -hmm. The cause of the sin is emotional. Yeah. And so unless the emotion is addressed, we're still going to want to do it. We're yeah. feeling, going to feel it's natural. Mm -hmm. to do it and whether that's sinning against oneself like in the sense of you know doing things that are out of harmony of love of self mm -hmm. or sinning against others mm -hmm. or sinning against god or their environment there are reasons why we do things yeah and and we we need to find the reasons but our desire to love might be strong enough to say well no what a, no matter what the reason is i'm going to yeah. stop i'm going to stop engaging the behavior sort yeah, of yeah that's right yeah. so this is like a smoker who says no matter what the reason is, I am just not going to have a cigarette again. I don't know. I, I, I know all the bad intellectually, all the bad things. I don't know why I smoke. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I started. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I continued it. I don't know why I, you know, I have a feeling of wanting the nicotine. Yeah. I don't know why that is either. I don't know why I do these things. But I do know that it's not good for me. Mm -hmm. And I do know that, it, that it's not good for other people around me. And I do know that it's not good for the environment, so I'm going to stop. Yeah. So, so he stopped. Yeah. But he's still got the reason why he wants to smoke in him. Yes. Yes. And until he gets rid of that, there's going to be feelings of feeling worse at times mm. and feeling confused. Yeah. You know, sometimes yeah. worse, sometimes better. And of course, here we're focusing on the worst. And so, you know, because he's got this state where he wants to do something, but there's still the feeling inside of him that he still feels like he wants the mm -hmm. cigarettes occasionally and mm -hmm. you know and most smokers will tell you won't they that oh you know very few of them go cold turkey and never want a cigarette again you know they walk into a pub or something and have a drink and then they yeah. feel like oh a cigarette would be good now <laughs> or something like that right? a lot of people would do but then there's people like me i used to smoke a bit and i have other friends who did as well and you get this almost visceral opposite reaction where you and i guess that's a sign that you really have remove the desire for it because it's almost like it it's not necessarily disgusting then. yeah but it's see that's judgment of it now and uh -huh. that could be triggered by the fact that you're the now shame. ashamed of the emotion yeah. that drove you and yeah. you still haven't released it yes so yes. it doesn't necessarily mean the underlying emotion mm. is released very, very and interesting. and yeah. most emotions relating to smoking are about self-destruction mm -hmm. and let's face it they are quite difficult emotions mm. to release so so you may actually feel ashamed of your self-destruction mm -hmm. and then have a layer of you know judgment about that shame which then makes you feel angry every time you feel mm. somebody smokes around you does that make sense yes i, I yeah. wouldn't say i feel angry but i, well, I find frustrated. it you know, sort of you know, it's not sick sickening, sickening uh, i feel physically unwell yeah, yeah yeah and that could be because yeah. you're not letting yourself feel the shame yes Yes, and so this is interesting as well because you're talking about addiction and sin here a little bit interchangeably, but really I can see that part of my sin was the desire to treat myself badly, badly. like a self-destructive feeling within mm -hmm. myself. Mm -hmm. Part of it was about um, 
avoiding social anxiety. Yes. Uh, so they're the two major things that I feel: self hatred and uh, avoidance of oh. uh, social anxiety. Yeah. Um, so I engaged with the cigarette smoking as a way of um, avoiding. Mm -hmm. that sin within myself. So that's the addiction, mm -hmm. the sinful emotions that the compensation is working on as the other two Correct. emotions. Correct. So but, but smoking is also a sin. In it's itself. a sin in, in and of itself. So I've yeah. removed the desire for that sin, yeah. but the underlying um, kind causes, of, causes of, of that sin are not gone from they're within. Partially they're partially dealt with, obviously. They're reduced. They're reduced. But they're not totally gone. No. Yeah. So that's... It, that's how we can stop, like, say, the cigarette smoking. And your desire to not smoke anymore is is high because yeah. you know it's unhealthy and a lot of and other things. Never, right? never have a feeling. And of, you never have a feeling that oh, you I'd need like to smoke. Or, yeah. But those underlying emotions may cause you now to do other things that you feel are acceptable, mm -hmm. which are similar, have a similar damaging Absolutely. effect to smoking to yourself. Yes. And this is where you have to really, in the end, deal with the underlying emotion. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But there's a period of time between those two states mm. where you've dealt with the desire to do the sin itself that mm -hmm. you've recognised, mm -hmm. but you've yet to dealt with or have a desire or yet to deal with the emotions that drove it. Well, and also you're saying I. it sounds to me like my physical reaction is more about shame. Yes. About the engaging with something um, so physically detrimental to myself and, and really some shame about my self-hatred. Yes. Um, so that's, that shame is part of the compensation for the sin as well. So I haven't really released even the compensatory pain, I guess because that self-hatred still exists within me. Correct. You haven't released its cause. So the compensation is still working upon that. That's right. Hence the, Hence the sickening aversion. feeling yep. whenever you smell or see people smoke. Yeah. 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 And this is why a lot of people who used to smoke now are the most avid, anti. adherent, you know, yes. anti smokers. Yeah. Um, because they still have shame associated with the underlying reasons as or, to why they wanted to smoke in the first place. Or it reminds you of the time when you were fully engaged in it and fully engaged in self kind of attack Correct. and stuff. So it yeah. reminds you of things you don't want to be reminded yeah. of. Yeah. 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 Interesting. Yeah. yeah, it's interesting, isn't it, how that can happen. Mm. So these are all reasons why we might feel worse. Obviously, there's hundreds yes. of reasons. You know, well, you could examine every single situation <laughs> pretty much and see a reason as to why you might feel better or worse in any yes. situation. Well, there's just one final one that I wanted to sure. ask you about, and that is when I've ceased sinning, but I'm still reaping the harvest of my sin. Yeah, that's so, a tricky stage. Okay. Because you sort of... Can you give an example There's nothing you can do about it. Yes. Um, but an example of that is, let's say, uh, here's a good example. Let's say, as an adult, I, uh, uh, I had children and I treated my children very badly. Let's mm -hmm. say you were a male and you sexually abused your daughters or you were a, a female and you were violently abusive to your sons or, or whatever, or to your daughters or whatever. Mm -hmm. So let, let's say, you know, you've now recognised the severity of that sin and you've mm -hmm. dealt with it and you've actually even been repentant for it you've yeah. tried to you've tried to uh, recover the relationships you've been really sorry for it you've mm -hmm. done a lot of crying about it you've also worked through the causes related to it and you don't do those things anymore you treat children very well now yeah. and uh, and and every you know you you've got to even to the point where you no longer even feel bad about what you did, uh -huh. let's say. Uh -huh. And that, that has taken you a long time to do. It would of, take a Many long time. times. Yeah. It might take years to do that of feeling lots of grieving type of emotions. So you get to this stage, but your people that you harm still don't want to talk to you. Mm. Now that's where you're bearing the consequences of your sin mm -hmm. uh, in the sense that they still don't want to forgive you. Yeah. And you've got no control over you've that. You've got no control over that. No. So you may at times feel a bit bad about that. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, I've got no control over that. Once you get rid of feeling bad about that, mm -hmm. then you will have completed the process of being fully repentant. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. In other words, you'll have gone through the repentance process completely mm -hmm. and you'll no longer feel bad that they don't want to see you anymore. Yeah. But until that point, you might feel bad. You mm -hmm. might feel worse. 
And that's sort of still a part of reaping the compensatory harvest of what we sowed years before. Yeah, that's because yeah. of that uh, time delay and also yeah. the uh, effects of the ripple effect yeah. uh, going out into the world of what we do. And this is why we need to consider more seriously what we do, mm. because it does have long term effects on other people. Yeah. Of course, I'm not talking here about where they imagine you've sinned against them. No. That's a completely different thing. Yes. There are a lot of people who will imagine you've sinned against them when you have not. Mm -hmm. And uh, under those circumstances, there's very little you can do about that. Yep. And usually when you've dealt with it, you no longer feel bad about that either. Yeah. The fact that they don't want to have anything to do with you, it, it, you can see is not anything to do with what you've done, mm -hmm. but only what they think you've done, mm. which is a completely different thing. Mm. 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 But there are times when you may feel worse, completely even removing the sin completely, uh, where well, you may feel bad for a period of time until such a time as as you've removed all the process of repentance yeah. and then you won't even feel bad when people think you're bad. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Okay. Mm. But as you said, there's lots of reasons why we might feel worse when we stop our sin. Yeah. Even though from God's perspective, ceasing a sin is progression and there are compensatory benefits rewards, yeah. and rewards. Yes. And in our next section, yeah. we'll talk about some of the reasons we might feel better and some of them are related to those rewards. Yes, but perhaps even before we go to the next section, though, we need to remind every, all of our listeners that even if we do feel temporarily worse about these things, mm -hmm. the fact that we're engaging new behaviour that is in harmony with God's laws yes means that every new step we make creates a new set of possibilities mm. for which we will be rewarded at some mm. point in the future. Mm. So we need to remember that even when we go through this period of time when things are a bit confusing, where sometimes we feel better, sometimes we feel worse, and um, the fact that we're engaging a new set of behaviour and a new set of desires and motivations that are completely in harmony with love, or at least more in harmony with love than our prior Mm. motivations means that our future rewards have a higher potential of occurring. Mm. It means that um, positive conversation will occur in our future. We need to have some faith in that. Yeah. 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 I certainly, and once you start to develop that faith, it, it does help you immensely. Yes. It helps you get through the short, whereas before you're driven by this a desire for the short-term relief yeah. of the short-term kick from the addiction, I call it, yeah. you start to think, oh, this short-term discomfort is only going to be here for a little while and then the rewards will far outweigh this little bit of discomfort. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. 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 Why I may feel better when I stop sinning. So why? what are some of the reasons I'll actually feel good when I stop sinning? Yeah, so this is the, the opposite of what we've just been discussing. Obviously, this section is all about confusion. Mm -hmm. And we've already talked about why we might feel worse when we stop sinning. But now what we need to do is have a look at why we may feel better while we, uh, when we stop sinning. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we can see, oh, well, if these two states, if we fluctuate between these two states of worse, better, worse, better, worse, better, at times we might be feeling quite confused about the whole process, yes, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, so if we look at um, addictions, for example, I may be very, very happy that I've identified my addictions, mm. even though I'm yet to remove them. Mm. And, and that's something that I meant to mention in our previous section about facing personal truth. We talked a lot there about why you might feel worse when it happens. Mm. But a lot of times we do feel better. Mm. We do. Mm. Even if there's a little bit of emotional confrontation, when mm. we face an addiction or a personal truth, there's often we feel like, oh, that's a relief. Or, oh, why, that's why I do what I do. Yeah, thank God, now I understand. <laughs> this madness that I have about wanting to do that, yeah. that's why I do that. You know, And, and <laughs> you might not have removed the reason why yet, but at no. least knowing why. Yeah. No, like There's a lot of joy in knowing, yeah, and, and you get a lot of satisfaction now knowing, when before, particularly when before you were in a state of confusion. Yeah. So, yeah, that feels really wonderful. Right? Yeah. It's like, before I'm confused, now I know. Wow, like, yeah, this is really awesome. great. I don't have to worry about that anymore. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. I'm okay. also um, happy that I'm able to stop the addiction. Uh, in other words, my desire, even though I might not have gotten rid of the cause of the addiction, yeah. My desire to not do that thing mm -hmm. and my desires to see the advantages of not doing it yeah. are higher now than my desire to, to engage, engage the addiction. Yeah. And, and now I've got a desire to stop the addiction. Yeah. And, and I'm, 
usually going to feel pretty proud of myself about that. Actually. Yeah, your self self worth and self esteem actually grows through that, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah, I'm going to feel like yeah, I'm getting better. I'm getting pretty good now. <laughs> My addictions no longer have control of me. Yeah. I have control of them. And that's a great feeling. That's a great feeling. Yeah. yeah you don't yeah. feel like your life's out of control anymore. Yeah. You don't feel like your life's like about to go off on a bad tangent anymore. Yes. You know, you know everything is, is more yeah. stable. Yeah. And your life and relationships also are becoming more stable as a mm. result. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Okay. Mm. Another thing. Um, I can feel that I'm not harming myself or my environment or other people as much as I was before. Yes. Yeah, so, so instead of sort of engaging in my addictions or my sins and just going ahead and doing them and not really caring about others or myself or the environment and the response that we have emotionally or physically or otherwise, we're now caring about these particular things and we feel proud about ourselves mm -hmm. that we care. You know, mm -hmm. we, we have some level of uh, self-awareness now and self-assurance uh, that we're doing the right thing mm. and it feels good to do the right thing mm. yeah mm. yep um and as you've we've already said we're feeling proud and happy with ourselves for making a sincere change mm. yeah yeah i think that's a big thing and not yeah. people underrate that but it's a, it's such a big thing if you can be happy with yourself about what you've done you don't need other people to uh, make you feel happy about yourself. Mm. You know, you, you, you feel quite, um, I suppose, self-sufficient in this regard. Yeah. Um, and it's a great feeling to be self-sufficient, not reliant on the good opinions of others in order yeah. to feel good about yourself. <gasps> yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Mm. Yeah. Um, so more self-respect, which you've touched on. Yeah, uh -huh. and self-respect, again, is something that, a lot of people don't spend much time thinking about, but it is a big thing because it, it can wear you down with your worry and, and concerns, you know, if you don't have self-respect. What I find if you do have self-respect, you don't worry about a lot of things mm. that you used to worry about anymore. Mm. Um, and you also you have respect for your body and you have respect for your life and you have, you know, there, there are all sorts of areas where you now have gained some respect for what, you know, God has done, but also for the fact that you are able to now be the the person responsible for your life instead of making your addictions and injuries responsible yes. for your life. Yes. You know? So, yeah. yeah, that's a very uh, calming, it has a very calming effect on you emotionally. Mm. 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 Um, I might also now see the emotional reasons of my sin mm. and I might have even started to let some of them go, which leads to a lot of yeah the relief you feel feelings. once you yeah. get rid of those causes means that you don't have to try to stop sinning anymore yeah. so instead of having to instead of it being an effort to do the right thing mm -hmm. it's natural to do the right thing yes. and that's yeah. a great feeling then because you, yeah. you, you know, it's just automatic yeah. you just do the right thing and you don't even have to worry anymore yeah. that you might do the wrong thing because yeah. you never will because yeah. the emotion that drove it before is all gone. It's gone. So yeah. that's a that's a great feeling as well. Yeah. Feeling of joy results there. Yeah. Mm. Excellent. Um, and I've also stopped my future harvest of sin. Yeah, and this is something that requires a bit of faith too, obviously, as mm. a as a feeling. But but once you start seeing, oh wow, you know, I used to do this thing all the time before. Mm. You know, like and physical addictions or emotional ones, we 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 engage them without thought generally. Mm -hmm. And we do them and just do them and do them again, do them again, automatically receiving the results. Mm. And then when we stop doing them, we start seeing, oh, you know, that thing that used to happen to me before, it doesn't happen to me anymore. Yes. And the reason why it doesn't happen to me anymore is because I stopped sinning. Yes. And it doesn't happen anymore. Yeah. It's a <laughs> and, great feeling. And that's a great feeling. Yeah. Yeah. That, that you now can, can predict that your future life is potentially be much of much greater happiness mm -hmm. than your current life is. Mm -hmm. and, and so that gives you some assurance that your future is going to be better than your current yeah. existence. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Mm. Yeah, so a lot of reasons and obviously more. Obviously, we yeah. could discuss lots more, but... Why we feel good when we stop sinning. Yeah. Um, but in that little section there, we've contrasted, haven't we? Yeah. Um, to some of the reasons we might feel worse and some of the reasons we might feel, feel better, better and the and overall... why we might feel confused. <laughs> confusion <laughs> that can result. Yeah. 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 That's good. Thank you. <laughs>
Well, everybody, I suppose that brings us to the conclusion of our little session. We didn't get to cover all the things we would like to cover, did we, Mary? No, so, no. Um, that's a bit unfortunate. But more to come. More to come. <laughs> And we're still going to hold another section on conversation, so it looks like there might be uh, two more sections now on conversation, <laughs> rather than it's one. It's become epic, but yeah. Um, yeah. I think there I'm is still myself. a lot of things yeah. that we, we need to mention about conversation. So we do yeah. want to have those discussions with you before we can answer the questions. We really, the reason why we did all this was yeah. we want to answer some questions from our listeners about repentance and forgiveness, and so they can see everything that's involved in it. And I think what we might try and do at the end, we've got already two um, people's questions about forgiveness and repentance, and we might even just see if there's other people who've emailed us about it, because we've given all this pretext, if yeah. we can then refer. We um, might be able to answer their questions quite rapidly, yes. actually, because yeah. and refer them to specific sections of what yeah. we've discussed. Yeah. But just in revision, um, basically, we want to take you back to our first session. And our first session was all about just God's laws generally, and what and God's laws that God's laws operate in our on our behalf to help us <laughs> and assist us to have happiness, rather than it being something that's to do with punitive or punishing. Yeah. And that God's law of compensation, which is what we've been referring to to in this discussion, mm -hmm. uh, obviously is about that too. This mm -hmm. desire to recover or correct us from for for negative behavior unloving behavior and and also reward positive behavior yeah. then we also in the first session looked at god's truth and examined god's truth what what how we can determine what god's truth is and also uh, what that means in terms of forgiveness and repentance mm. how do we know the truth about forgiveness and repentance mm. so that was our first session yeah, then in our second session, we looked at what's the correct process to go through if we're going to forgive and repent. So we gave some background on uh, what this, uh, the importance of forgiveness and repentance in our first session. And then in the second session, we talked about what are we going to have to do to do this properly mm. and um, the emotional side of that process and how emotional that process actually is. Mm. And then we got to our third session, which is a couple of sessions ago now. And yeah. there we were talking about the, the responsibility that we have to forgive and repent. Mm -hmm. and, and most people don't see it as a responsibility. And yet God, God's uh, reason for making these laws is to create self-responsible beings yes. who have free will to act, but who are going to act responsibly. Mm. And so we can see that um, forgiveness and repentance also, then there are responsibilities we have to do both processes, which we examined. And then we looked at this term accidental accidents, <laughs> <laughs> accidental sin versus intentional, intentional sin. And we examined, uh, you know, what the difference is between those things. And we found that there's very little accidental sin, really. Yeah. And most of it is intentional. But uh, we examined those uh, pr principles. And then we discussed more about the sincerity involved, the, the desire inside of ourselves to be motivated purely and the, necess the necessity for pure motivations if we're going to be involved in the process of repentance and forgiveness. Mm. Then we moved on, didn't we, to our fourth session. And that, because of this, um, in the third session, we talked about the necessity of forgiveness and repentance, the importance of it. It was natural then to start talking about compensation, mm. wasn't it? Because compensation is really, as you're learning, in, hopefully in this session um, uh, and in our subsequent sessions, how important compensation is to, in motivating us towards a true process of forgiveness and repentance. So in session four, we just introduced the basics about what is compensation and how it operates. And um, the significance, we talked a lot in that session about after we die, uh, what happens and our physical body versus our spirit body and all kinds of things there and how that relates, how compensation relates to those existences. Mm -hmm. Now, in this session just gone, obviously, we only covered a couple of the things we wanted to cover. So the first part we covered was the additional uh, points that we wanted to make about compensation yes. itself and the effects of it. Um, and also, we then have just finished now this whole discussion about the feelings involved mm -hmm. in the, the, the sensations of feelings and, and emotions involved in 
you know, firstly facing sin, but also facing personal truth. Mm. And and we discovered there's quite a lot involved in that yes. process emotionally as well. Yeah. But we would have liked to have covered some other points too, which we will cover in our next session. And they, they are points relating to the relationship between compensation and forgiveness and repentance itself as a mm. process. Mm. And we want to see the relationship. Well, what, how does compensation now have an effect on pu pushing us or motivating us into repentance or forgiveness? Mm. And, and what are the mechanisms that compensation engages to motivate that kind of behaviour? And then on top of that, we'd probably like to raise with you uh, some ideas of compensation mm -hmm. that actually are present in most religious faiths today. Yep. And, and a lot of spiritual movements uh, incorporate parts of compensation into them. Obviously, most of them don't have a very concise view of it and they, not, they, they don't see it as God's laws in operation, mm. but rather just principles. And uh, what we would like to do is, is sort of show you how some of those underlying principles are there in in the different religious face but but not highly developed no it's not a complete picture anywhere is no it? no there's no complete picture on earth of yeah. compensation and in fact most people do not learn about compensation completely until they've passed yeah. and and go through the actual processes of compensation yes. themselves <laughs> So that's uh, where we're headed with our next discussion or two, and uh, we may get to further points about conversation after that, but uh, we'll see how we go. You know how we are, so <laughs> we'll see, you'll see how we go. But I'd like to thank Mary today for all of her effort uh, in preparing a lot of these outlines for us and, and uh, also asking these questions as, as we go through. And thank you, Darlene, for yeah, your, thanks, your yeah. enthusiasm and your wise answers. <laughs> And we'd like to thank our team out the back there who, who are doing this whole patiently shooting us all the time. <laughs> and, uh, and quite often we speak for hours and hours and hours and I've got to listen for hours and hours and hours as well as do the editing and everything afterwards. So we'd like to thank Eloisa and Elena in particular. Thanks, and, guys. Uh, and also Cornelius who's in the process of training yeah. as well out the back there. So thank you, you guys. And we hope to see you guys uh, sometime in the future when you've got a bit more time than your hands and want to learn a bit more about the process of the principles involved in repentance and forgiveness, as well as this, uh, the next subject, obviously, which is more about compensation itself. And, and uh, later than that, we'll be discussing things like the human conscience and other things that we've never yes. discussed before. So hopefully you enjoy those discussions. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, for, thanks, babe, for your you, participation. Darling. And we look forward to seeing you soon. See you next time.